This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio and all over the world from the mecca of mixed martial arts, Las Vegas on UFCRadio.com. Here are your hosts, Heidi Fang, Phil Devine, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! All right, welcome to the Friday edition of the MMA Fight Corner here on Fox Sports 920 in Las Vegas and coming at you worldwide on UFCRadio.com for your hosts, Heidi Fang, Joey Varner, Filthy Phil Devine, I'm your referee. In the action today, Dave Carney, and we have a great big show for you on UFC Radio and Fox 920 here in Las Vegas. We're breaking down the UFC 159 fight that's coming up this Saturday, April 27th. On pay-per-view, that's 7 p.m. East, or excuse me, 7 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 10 p.m. Pacific. Of course, you can always go to one of the great bars, watch this action. We're going to start off right away, though. Phil, coming in with you, we talked a lot about the John Jones Chael Sonnen fight. We're going to retouch on that in just a little bit. We're going to get Joe Stradamus's picks coming up a little bit later on in the show. That's going to be a lot of fun, and we're also looking forward to a special guest uh, in studio today, so we're going to be staying tuned for that. But, Phil, I want to jump right in with the Czech Congo Roy Nelson fight. This is one that we didn't really touch on much at all on Wednesday. Tell me a little bit about Czech. He's a bit older. He's 37 years old going up against Roy Nelson. What are your thoughts about this fight? Yeah, you know, uh, we've talked a few, like, actually, what was it? Frank Mir last week we talked about. He's had the most fights in UFC heavyweight history. Two weeks before that, we mentioned Gabe Gonzaga being the third most fights in UFC history. Well, Czech Congo's number two. Reg, right in, there, once right in between them. Once again, little-known fact Phil strikes. <laughs> well, you know what? It's a not a little-known fact, and is actually everyone seems to, to not appreciate lately, is the way Czech Congo's been performing, though. His last few fights have been very... You know, just not entertaining whatsoever, especially a guy who's come out. When he first came to the UFC, you know, he was knocking guys out left and right. Um, he, he had made some real improvements in his career, and then lately he's just kind of pushing people up against the cage and holding them there. But he will not be able to do that with Roy Nelson. You, you know what fight was entertaining of his, though? Pat Barry. Pat Barry. Well, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but, that, but, but, but aside from that, a little fresher in our, in our, in our, in our taste uh, buds, the uh, Mark Hunt. <laughs> well, yeah, now, that was just entertaining because Hunt KTFO'd him. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Congo, this is actually, he hasn't uh, he hasn't fought in a long time. His last fight was uh, Sean Jordan, and I mean, that was over, that was last July. That was UFC 149. And I don't yeah. really hold him responsible for that boring fight because that was Sean Jordan. who It really takes two to tango. Yeah. yeah, and Sean Jordan was really trying to pin him against the cage and... You know, uh, I really I rewatched that fight the other night, and he just didn't listen to his corner. His corner was telling him to let his right hook go, let his hands go, and he was just bull rushing ke- check against the cage. So check has been the proprietor in those kind of matches as well, but it takes two to tango. It definitely does. And Roy Nelson, you know, uh, you know, we talked about check Congo, and he's such an intimidating looking guy. You know, Czech Congo is not the type of dude you want to meet in a, in a dark alley oh, I mean, or even a well lit. I, I was going to say, for a 37-year-old guy, you look at how you know how he's put together. I mean, he looks like he's 27. I mean, he's in fantastic physical shape. He looks amazing. He's a genetic fruit. Dude, he's amazing. You remember, dude? He was awesome in Gladiator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in Amistad, <laughs> he was amazing. He was awesome in, in Amistad. When he actually shrunk <laughs> himself down and came on this season of The Ultimate Fighter and did a phenomenal job. You know, grew a space between his teeth. Yeah, no, 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 listen. Yeah. Yeah. Like a mini Chuck Congo. <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I don't think we've ever had an issue in the UFC where we've m- mistaken Roy Nelson for another fighter. Roy <laughs> Nelson is w- one on himself and, uh, you know, wants to be sponsored by Burger King. He's I, not, I, not the exact, uh, he's not the epitome of physical health. I've mistaken Roy Nelson for, for a wrong truck driver before. <laughs> well, and, and so, but here's what I was going to ask you, Joey, speaking, uh, you know, because you've got a lot of in-the-ring knowledge, um, and you talk a lot about guys and, and, you know, the kind of pop in their punch, what kind of stamina. Now, Roy Nelson is known for a big overhand right. He's got a oh, real yeah. big overhand right. How do you think that's going to play against Czech in, in this fight? Do you think that's Roy's, you know, one real strength against check is that big overhand right 
you know, that's one of his big strengths. You know, uh, Roy is a great wrestler as well, Nevada State champ. He doesn't use it that well, and it will be hard to use it against Czech, but I see if it, does end, if it does end up against the fence and grinding away, Roy will control that. He's also a black belt in, wor- in jiu-jitsu. You know, he's a world champion. I mean, we're talking about a guy who, who dominated Frank Muir like 17-2 to two in a grappling match. So this guy's got all the skills on the mat. But when he matches up with someone like Czech Congo, Czech Congo isn't a phenomenal boxer. He's decent, but he's good with his punches and his kicks and his knees. He puts it all together. Now, the problem with his kicks and stuff like that, and he likes to throw those leg kicks, he likes to throw those body kicks, what's the counter to all those kicks? Overhand right. A big overhand right, and yeah. that's and that's that's Roy Nelson's specialty. Um, I, this, this just the body type, the style, the movement. I, I see this kind of playing out similar to uh, Czech versus Hunt. Now, Mar- uh, um uh, Roy Nelson isn't the, the, the striking, the caliber striker that Hunt is, but he's got the pop, he's got the explosion, he has a similar body type. Um, and and Czech Congo's chin isn't once what, 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 what it was. Yeah, and you know that's kind of what I was wondering, too, if, if that chin can hold up to a big overhand right. But uh, now I want to go over to Heidi and ask your thoughts on one of the other fights that's got a bit of a backstory that's brewing right now between Phil Davis and Vinny Magliese. Is that how I said that? Did I say that name right? Magliese. Magliese, okay. <laughs> and if you were from Rio... You would say that the Eins, Eins, okay. would be a SH, but that's not how people, okay. only people in Rio say that. Vinny Magli Eins. Okay, <laughs> so there we go. So, Heidi, tell us a little bit about the Phil Davis and, and the Vinny Magli Eins fight there, and then we'll talk a little bit about the Phil Davis news that just kind of broke this morning. So, uh, what do you think about this one? Well, I think it's going to be an interesting fight. Uh, Phil Davis' strengths, obviously, are on the ground, and if you look at what he does when people come at him with strikes, he automatically will go in and divert for that takedown. But it's going to be a very dangerous place going to the ground with Vinny. It's going to be interesting with the grappling exchanges because Phil actually does have a great pedigree on the ground grappling. Like if you look like a guy, like the Wagner Prado fight, the second one, he was just outclassing that kid and it was clear that he had no grappling. But against a guy like Vinny, you have a a world champion in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu that is just undoubtedly one of the best when it comes to the ground game. And but but Phil Davis has only once in his entire career ever been had an, uh, a submission attempt against him. So and he successfully defended it. So it's going to be interesting to see if that defense holds up against a guy like Vinny. Yeah, Phil Davis definitely does not want to play in Vinny's guard. You know what? I disagree 100. percent Really? Yeah, yeah. I do think t- do th- tell. Top position. You know, if you have solid defense, solid submission defense, and good ground and pound, it's easy to avoid submission. Uh, uh, Phil Davis wasn't scared whatsoever to take little nog down to the ground. A little nog is is no slouch when it comes to when it comes to uh, 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 submission. Yeah. yeah, he's a world champion, a black belt, one of the best in the business. You know, um, I wouldn't say he's as good as Vinny, but you got to remember Vinny's pedigree in jiu-jitsu it comes from jiu-jitsu tournaments. You know, it's not necessarily, uh, and he has been effective with with it in mixed martial arts, but he hasn't really faced any solid wrestlers lately. You know, last wrestler he really faced was Ryan Bader. Ryan, Ryan pieced him up. That yeah, and, and, and I think though, ago. yeah, no, I think standing up, um, you know, Vinny, Vinny, uh, I, I think the fight's even, but I think Phil might even have the advantage there because of the gas tank. Vinny's notorious gases. Vinny gases at the end of the first round, and it kind and I love Vinny. You know what I'm saying? I'm buddies with him, but I'm just, I'm just shooting you straight here. Um, as the fight progresses, you know, fatigue makes cowards of us all, and, and when you really don't have a lot going on, it's much easier for a guy to mount a stand-up offense. Than, than it is to you to mount a defense when you're gassed. Yeah, sure. it's, it's funny that you say that about his gas. That is the big factor because I remember when I first moved out here and I started you know, taking grappling with Vinny. That was the first thing you said to me. You were like, oh, yeah, you're, you're grappling with Vinny? Ask him how his cardio. Mm. Ask him how his cardio is. Tell him his cardio is suspect. You know, just, you know, cause do, that's you, do you know why that happened? I, I remember you told me, but I can't off the top of my head I, think of it. It was an inside joke because... Uh, I was commentating some fights, and there was a fight between Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and tough uh, Ultimate Fighter alumni Mike Nichols versus Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and Ultimate Fighter um, alumni Vinny Magalhães. And, you know, I was saying Vinny's a world champion. Vinny has all this, Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. And I really didn't have a lot to say good about Mike in this match because he was really <laughs> outclassed. So I said, you know. He's got nice tattoos. Yeah, <laughs> I said Mike's, Mike's hope, you know, is that he can take this later in the round. The altitude will play a factor in, in, in the conditioning because Vinny's cardio has been suspect in the past. Well, Vinny heard that, and he nonstop, he, every time he sees it, he brings it up. So now, like, every time I, I tweet it to him, I bring it up to him every time I see him. So, okay, now here's what I want to talk to you guys all about, and then I'm going to restart over here with Heidi again so with Phil Davis though something has just kind of popped up here in the news that may affect 
his mental state coming up to this fight. So, Heidi, we just got word, you know, late last night, I guess, early this morning, that uh, Phil is going to face some sort of, uh, you know, a court hearing or a court date. Uh, he's being arraigned on charges of abuse, okay, I domestic violence so, right. uh, against his girlfriend, his son's, his child's mother, excuse me. What do you think that may do to Phil and his state of mind going into the fight? Do you think that'll have a negative or a positive effect on his performance? It depends on how he can handle all of that with the fight coming up. I mean, obviously, uh, I don't want to speculate as to, you know, what exactly happened, whether or not it did or did not happen, um, you know, but the court date coming up, it's obviously court dates don't just get set out of thin air. So it's something that he's probably known about for a while. I believe if, you know, TMZ broke it, they're, they're all over the place uh, as far as whether or not the veracity of a statement like that, you know, where they got it from, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, it's obviously something I feel like he might have been dealing with, so I don't think that the pressure would get to him too much except for the fact that maybe he would have preferred to have kept it under wraps. Okay. All right, well, we've got about, okay, go ahead. Just quick question. Do you know, is he still training with Lloyd Irvin? Well, I do know he's training at Alliance, and but I don't know if he is training with Lloyd. Um, I tried to ask him that question last week, and he kind of pitter pattered around it. Yeah, so I, um, I don't know, but it, it is a shame. But you know what? What stinks is we always do love the sport. That we absolutely this is our passion, and this is our what we do. We follow this sport like it's not like there's no tomorrow. Well, we hate seeing this being put out in the public yeah, eye. Yeah, and you never want the distraction because that's just something that you really don't need. But uh, because we've got about a minute and a half before we go to our first break, when we come back from our break, we've got more great stuff coming up. We're going to talk about the FX preliminary card. But, Joey, Phil, I want to get your input again. We talked about this fight between Michael Bisping and Alan Belcher the other day. But give me some more thoughts here. We're, we've got the fight tomorrow. Is there anything new or anything different that you're thinking? Real quick, Joey, we'll start with you. Nothing, no, but I'll tell you what. Michael Bisping and Alan Bisping. Belcher have waged a war of words. Yes, it's they trash have. talk nonstop, especially about who's going to knock out who. Um, I think this is a psychological ploy because I don't think Michael Bisping has any intention of making this a stand-up fight. I think he's going to try to use his wrestling offensively to take Belcher down. That's been the the, the gaping hole, the weak in the, the, the chink in the armor of Alan Belcher. Um, but I think Alan Belcher has. I don't think Michael Bisping's takedown offense is better than than Alan Belcher's takedown defense. I think Alan Belcher has the tools to keep the standing and piece up my, Michael Bisping. I hope so. Okay. All right. Phil, what but do you think? You know, Michael Bisping's only lost to champions or to championship contenders in the past. Great it's the point. only people he's lost to. I think that changes tomorrow night. I think Alan Belcher, you know, the, the war of words ha definitely is hyped up this fight, but I think it was a great fight before that. I think Alan Belcher uh, has the tools to get this done. You know what else, too? One thing is that I, I think also I think Duke Rufus is one of the best coaches in all mixed martial arts. The I think, if not the best, the top two striking coaches in all of mixed martial no arts. No doubt. And, and he's Alan Belcher's coach, so I think that definitely plays a factor. He's a master game planner. Yeah, well, we've got that, guys, and a whole lot more to talk about. We can break down this 159 card all day, but we still have to get to Jim Miller, Pat Healy. I want to talk about the ladies as well. That's going to be a fun fight this upcoming Saturday night. You're listening to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox 920 in Las Vegas and all over the world at UFC Radio. Dot com.
Vegas and streaming worldwide on UFCRadio.com. All right, welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner here on Fox 920 in Las Vegas and worldwide on UFCRadio.com. Heidi Fang, Joey Varner, Phil Devine, I'm Dave Carney, and we are rocking and rolling, talking about one of the most highly anticipated fight cards, I think, guys, in a long time. We've got lightweight champion John Bones Jones going up against Chael Sonnen. This is turning into... I think one of the most hype fights we, we've had in quite a while. So we've got that to talk about. Uh, we've talked a lot about that. But first, I, I want to throw it back to Heidi because we just ended off our last segment with a, a little bit about the women's fight here coming up. We've got Sarah McMahon versus Sheila Gaff. We talked to Sarah, Heidi, earlier in the week. You were able to set up that interview. Great and a studious work there uh, by your, uh, your reporting skills and, and way to get her on. So real quick, what do you think about that fight? And uh, do you think this is going to be another one of those great you know women's fights here you know for UFC well yep styles make fights and I was watching some tape on Sheila Gaff and she comes out swinging for the fences however a lot of the fights I saw with her are in very very small cages not the UFC size not the UFC platform so it'd be interesting to see how she adjusts to the size of the octagon and just her basic footwork where she's used to staying if she can get in the pocket and trade or not um, but with Sarah obviously the wrestling is her big strength. Right. Uh, she was an Olympic silver medalist in wrestling. And you know, she has, I think, learned her striking as she's gone along with her training in MMA. And against Shayna Baszler, which was her last fight in Invicta, she wasn't tentative with her striking at all. But what I wanted to see from her were more combinations. When she would land a punch, she would go in, get a jab, come back out. I wanted, if, if at the UFC level, I think you need to be able to land more than just a punch at a time. Be able to work the combinations and stay on your feet and stay light on your feet now she definitely has the gas tank for that so I think between the two of them like they always say styles make fights you have the striker a pure striker against the wrestler and I, I think it'll turn out to be yes a very 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 high action Enter fight. entertaining fight now for Joey sure. I, I know you had some thoughts on this so what do you think about Sarah and Sheila you know in this fight specifically about Sarah you really like her don't you you know what, I think Sarah, uh, Sarah McMahon has all the tools in the world to be a world champion. You know, she's got the wrestling pedigree, but she likes to stand and bang. She's got solid stand-up, and she's only getting better at that. You know, and if the stand-up exchanges don't go her way, she has the ability to transition right away into her wrestling. She also has solid top game, solid jiu-jitsu, you know. So I think, you know, and we've seen in the past what a wrestling foundation can do for a fighter who acquires a great solid stand-up game and solid submission defense. I think of Daniel Cormier. I think of Cain Velasquez. I think of Gray Maynard. You know, I think of Benson Henderson, Frankie Yeager. The list goes on and on and on of the great fighters in the world who have a solid, solid wrestling background and developed great striking games and great submission defense. She has the blueprint. She has the mold to do it. I think she has the will, the drive, the desire to make it happen as well. All right, well, great. Uh, I want to take uh, this opportunity to shift real quick back into one of the main card fights that I want to touch on. Phil, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Jim Miller versus Pat Healy. Uh, and before we go into our FX preliminary card breakdown, and we're going to let you guys really kind of talk about that for a while here, uh, give me a little bit on Jim Miller and Pat Healy here. Yeah, well, Miller, of course, he's coming off of that uh, fight of the night uh, uh, performance with Joe Lozon, which was an amazing, actually, I think it might have won fight of the year in a lot of, <laughs> in a lot of cat people's <laughs> votes. Um, you know, uh, he's he, like Michael Bisping, has only lost to champions or champion contenders. You know, he loses only to the best of the best. He's a BJJ black belt. He's got great wrestlings, a lot of submissions. Um, Pat Healy, you know, he's a grinder coming in from Strike Force. He went 7-1 and one promotion. The only loss he had was to Josh Thompson. Uh, you know, six-fight win streak. He got the title shot with Melendez, and then Melendez got hurt, so, you know, never happened. Uh, he's been a pro for a while, dude, and he's got big wins. I mean, wins over Condit, Daly. Uh, Dan Hardy um, it's going to be a good fight you know, and also not only that, it's Pat Healy's return to the UFC after what, like six years. Yeah, I was going to say it's one over a half a decade. Yeah, he, like Josh Thompson, we talked yeah. about last week. You know, coming back after eight years, this is this is a chance for Pat Healy to really, you know, show what he's learned. Unfortunately, he's got a real tall task in Jim Miller. I think Jim Miller it may be the best 155 out there who is not champ a champion. Or you know what, be. though? That's what a lot of us here thought about the Diaz fight, though, last week when we were talking about Josh coming back into the UFC. So you never know. These guys might have a good opportunity and, and you know, to really show again what it is that they've got, and they could have done a lot of work. So I want to go right now, though, to the FX preliminary card. Let's break this down a little bit. Joey, start with you. 
We've got some great fights coming up on the preliminary card. Tell me what you're most looking forward to. And then a second question, what do you think is going to be the most brutal fight of the night? Okay, I got to rewind a little bit. Okay. Uh, you know, ADD Joey over yeah, here, you know. All right. Uh, look, look. Uh, squirrel. <laughs> shiny objects. Yeah, shiny yeah, objects, exactly. Joey. Um, okay. I was actually, you know, I didn't watch a lot of footage on Sheila Gaff. I studied her record, you know, and saw who she fought and what their records were. But I just watched a clip, and I got to tell you something. I am going to be an eternal non-fan of hers. I want to see her Re lose. I really? want to see her get smashed. I want to see it violent. Because wow, I just that's, watched a fight that's all, where that's she carries this girl uh, named Gen Jennifer Maya, and they go out. She puts her hand out. The one girl goes to touch her glove. Uh -oh. She puts her hand out to touch gloves. And then right as they're about to hit, Psych. pulls it back and hits her with the right hand. I hate that. I think it's the most scumbag, dishonorable thing in the world to do in mixed martial arts. In a street fight? Yeah, hey, I'm all for the pre preemptive strike. I like sure, sure, smile, sure. wave, and the yeah, head. Yeah, bar the bar fights are different. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's why exactly. Joey doesn't drink anymore, though, because, you know, because of those In street those fights, how many right times do you, do you touch hands before you go at it? I, I touch my know. forehead <laughs> right between their eyes. All right, so let's not get too off track. Now, back to the questions. All right, so one. You know, tell me what you think or uh, what you think is going to be one of the most brutal fights of the night. This could be a prelim card or a main card. And then two, you know, break down. You know, some of these fights. We, we've got some you know really cool things coming up. I mean, the Johnny Bedford fight uh, versus Brian Caraway. I, I'm real interested to see because I've heard some some cool stuff about Bedford before. What do you know about that fight? Bedford, well, first of all, Caraway's coming in at, at a very late, late replacement. Very late. Out, dropping yeah. down to 135. It's going to be a hard cut. You know, he, do, he usually walks around pretty heavy, closer to 150. Wow. You know, plus. So I think it's going to be a tough, tough cut. And he's going against a guy who I think is honestly might be a better wrestler than him. You know, Caraway wrestled in college, but so did Johnny Bedford. And he actually uses his wrestling on the defensive side as opposed to using it on the offensive side. And he's got some knockout power. He's really shown lately he's developed himself into a knockout artist. I think he's going to knock out Brian Caraway violently, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing it. All right, so then just real quick, what about the most brutal fight of the night? Is there anything sticking out to you that you think, man, this is just going to be a really, really brutal fight? Couple. First, uh, Leonard Garcia and Cody McKenzie, two guys, they swing for the fences. Cody McKenzie has been kind of known as a one-trick pony. All mm -hmm. he has is a guillotine, but he does swing for the fences. He goes nuts. Leonard Garcia is going to come out there swinging, going nuts as well. The, the, the propensity for violent in that match is very high. Uh, Rustam, uh, Rustam Kabalov, I think, versus Yancey Medeiros. There's there's a lot of violence that could happen in that fight as well. Yancey Medeiros has, has really shown he's got some solid boxing. He's got good hands, and he was a, he was a solid wrestler in high school. But but Kabalov was a combat sambo world champion. He's got amazing wrestling. And if you if you watch his last fight, man, it was a highlight reel of suplexes and slams. He slammed a guy till he was unconscious. This is something he's done over and over again in his career. It wasn't the first time he's done this. He's done this many times. So I look forward to Ruslan getting uh, uh, Kabalov getting a hold of Madeiras and just slamming him on his head repeatedly. I think that's going to be awesome. Um, also, you know, on the main card, one that, two fights that really could lead to some 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 fireworks, some violence. Uh, Heidi, you touched on this one at the break. Uh, Jim Miller and Pat Healy. You know, Pat Healy, I think, is, is, is like a slower not as explosive version of Jim Miller. He's not as quick. He's not as polished. His wrestling isn't as good. But they're they're very similar blueprints. One's an orth orthodox fighter. One's a southpaw fighter. But they're both grinders. They both fight. They both bring it. Uh, I think that's going to be the case here. But I think Jim Miller is always going to be one step ahead. I think we'll see some cuts open up and some blood oh, in this yeah. fight as well. Um, but another one that I think really could end up violent is... is um, Phil Davis and Vinny Maggie Yines. Yeah. You know, Vinny gets gassed out and, and after the first round, and if Phil ends up on top of him in that second and third round, he's going to lay down some vicious ground and pound. It's, it's going to be it's going to be nasty. Well, I tell you what, this is Vinny's cue. If he's listening to the show on I Fox not. or on UFC Radio, we want you to know that Joey thinks that you're going to get gassed after the first round, so show him up. Uh, <laughs> Phil, real quick, because... Thanks, uh, you, uh, jerk. Uh, uh, well, well, hey, I'm going to set you up. You get knocked down, not me. Um, so, Phil, I want to ask you, you know, because we've got a lot of great fights here. Obviously, it's a, it's a hyped fight card, and we're always happy to hear this week in MMA history with Phil Devine. Which one of these fights do you think has the potential to make a historical UFC type of a fight. Well, you know, Joey touched on Kabalov, and one of the things about Kabalov is he probably had one of the most impressive UFC debuts we've ever seen. But if you're talking about being historic and, and the historic proportions and something that in two years down the road, every time this week comes up and I'm talking about it, it would have to be if Chael Sonnen wins. If Chael Sonnen yeah. beats John Jones tomorrow night, it will be the biggest upset in 
in sports history. It, uh, in it, sports it, history. In sports oh history. If, if bigger than Tyson Douglas? Bigger than Tyson Douglas. I, I don't Douglas. know. I don't no, know no. Bigger guess. than Tyson Douglas. Douglas. That was like 23 <laughs> to 100, though, right? Wasn't that something <laughs> astronomical? All right. I, I, don't, I don't know. if it, it, I agree with you. It would be a major upset. But, you know, let, so absolutely, that would be the historical one. But let me ask you, Heidi, real quick. Do you think that there is is a potential for upset with Chael Sonnen and John Jones, if only because what we're hearing in the news, especially in the last couple of days, you know, John Jones has been on uh, UFC tonight talking about, well, you know, maybe Chael Sonnen's been on uh, steroids this whole time. And you know how sometimes that can really fire up a guy, or maybe it shows a lack of discipline in how the other guy's training. He's, he's giving excuses before it, you know, it happens. What do you think about the possibility of an upset? None. None. Okay. <laughs> so, Phil, maybe, <laughs> maybe you're right. I got what do you think is upset? In, in MMA no, 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 hold on, time out, time there out. There was a chance. Look, look, this is the fight game. On any given day, any other person can step up and win a fight. That's been shown time and time again. Matt Serra versus GSP. 1,000 uh, uh, MMA media people sat around and had the same response that said none. There's no chance. What happens? Sarah clips him, wins the welterweight title of the world. So there is definitely a chance. I'll tell you what. John Jones has shown that he doesn't like pressure as well. He, he, he does a great job of using his footwork to control the pace and dictate the when and where the fight happens. But Chael Sonnen's a guy that's going to get in your face, come out from the word go, swing and punches, grind and bury his head in your chest, try for the double leg, pin you against the cage, make it a grimy, nasty fight. And John Jones has almost kind of been known as a prima donna. Like, he doesn't like that grimy, nasty. He likes well, he likes to get into a flow. I mean, John Jones has, has got... He likes and, to dictate uh, the he, pace. He does. Yes. He likes to dictate the pace. And, you know, I think that that's where, if we're going to look at Chael and look at what possibility he would have to overthrow uh, possibly as as Phil had stated earlier in the week the most dominant fighter in UFC history if Chael's got the opportunity to do that it's going to be like Joey says it's going to be rushing him up against the cage coming at him relentlessly and not letting John get into that rhythm that he likes to establish well, with you know with his high leg kicks and 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 his boxing game well, well now basically. there's a lot of dangers and that's why I think I don't know if he's going to get the double leg I think the, his for Chael to win this, he'll have to make it a, a grinding, dirty boxing fence, pin John against the fence, much like Daniel Cormier did against Frank Mir. But now that, that won't be an easy feat because when you're in that club, Hardly. there are three different weapons that John Jones loves to use. He's very efficient and effective with these weapons. It's the elbows in tight. It's his knees in tight. And also, he likes, especially against the cage, to hit these sneaky little trips where he pulls you one way, pushes you, sweeps a leg out from under you, and they're very effective. He's good at them. So uh, that's going to be Chael's area to win the fight. But it's going to be tough. I mean, it's it's going to be a lot more it, than tough. It, it, I was going to say it, it would, like Phil said, it would be historic. I don't know if I'm going to go with you know most uh, you know most historic sp feet in sports history, but perhaps very very uh, high top, up there. Top five in MMA history. Uh, yeah, well, absolutely. I'd say probably number, number one, one in yeah. MMA. Yeah. Number one. No, not bigger than not bigger than Saint Pierre. Sarah. Dana it would be. Would be. It yeah. would be. The Dana, Dana might have said that, but yeah. Saint Pierre Sarah was again 18 to 1 underdog. But do you know why it would be more? Is just because of the media hype. Look at how many more outlets are covering this fight now. I, it, it comes I, with time. That was because. Of the, that yeah. was because of, of the, the how much fans are following the sport now as yes. opposed to like that. But when you look at it, who Chael is, Chael's fought for the world champion. He did what he did to Anderson Silva. His you know everything he's done in the sport. When you look at what Matt Serra did before he got this, Matt Serra was cut from the UFC. They brought him back in the. He wasn't even in the UFC. They brought him back for a reality show. He fought Chris Lido in the horrible performance that yeah, everyone thought that he was lost. Boring. It was one of the worst fights in Ultimate Fighter history. For finales in Ultimate Fighter history. Off that, he gets a shot at GSP, and, and it's like 17 to one. I mean, they, that was a that will always be the greatest upset in mixed martial arts history. I don't know if Chael Sonnen wins tomorrow night. I, I, I'd have to put it up there with it. I mean, you think about it. Jones has got an 11 each, uh, uh, 11 inch reach. Has absolutely dominated every guy he's faced. And you look at it. He's got a loss on his career. If you know this sport, if you know that fight, you know damn well he didn't lose. Oh, he won. You, uh, yeah. you, you, yeah. Sound, you sound like him. you sound like Dana. Oh my fight. God! It was one of those he's things. Beating him if it was not Steve Mazzagatti as the referee, that fight would have been stopped like 15 elbows early. Earlier. John Jones, undefeated, best light heavyweight champion we've ever seen. You know what, though? 
Sonnen will put him on his back. I think he does. Okay. It. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna come back and you, you know. Wait, wait, sorry. No, 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 no. We, we, no. We no, we take some down. Oh, okay. See, look at that. I'm cutting off the mics because we don't have time. We're going to be coming back. We've got too much to cover. We've got Joe Stradamus' predictions. But, guys, when we come back from this break on the MMA Fight Corner, we're going to be talking to the owner of one of the coolest new things in the country. It's right here in Las Vegas. Dr. Jeffrey Burke from Hangover Heaven is going to be live in studio with us here on the MMA Fight Corner. You are not going to want to go anywhere, so stay tuned. All right, welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner here on Fox 920 in Las Vegas and streaming worldwide on UFCradio.com. For your host, Heidi Fang, Joey Varner, Phil Devine, I'm Dave Carney. And we were just talking about th some of these great fights on the other, uh, other side of this uh, break here. So, Phil, Joey, sorry to have to cut you guys off. A lot of great stuff coming up. And I didn't want to ruin the Joe Stradamus segment, which is coming up a little bit later. This is going to be a brand new and weekly segment where we're going to get Joey Varner's, you know, extremely psychic predictions on not, things. Not my predictions. Well, Joe Stradamus's. Yeah, I'm sorry. You, 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 you do turn he, characters. He, yeah, he, can't, he, he, he gets contacted by the spirit world. The spirit takes over, you okay. know what I'm saying? And, the, the MMA Magic Medallion, the Ouija board, the crystal ball, it all comes out, man. Kind of reminds me of the old Johnny Carson show with Ed McMahon. hi oh, and we could go off. And we're going to hear what uh, the magical Joe Stradamus has to say. And we've got some, some fun sounds. But also, we were talking about Dr. Jason Burke, not Jeff Burke. I apologize out there. Dr. Jason Burke, owner of one of the country's coolest new services that's housed right here in Las Vegas and something that I guess the doctor said will be coming to stores around the country very soon. But Hangover Heaven and Vita Heaven, Dr. Burke, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. It's Friday. I know this is getting very busy for you guys. Welcome to the corner. Thanks for having me on. It is our pleasure. You're sitting here with at least at least one fairly heavy drinker so i'm i'm interested in what's going on joey's been clean well you know what, i don't know about I, phil i'll be honest with you man I, i'm gonna i'm gonna start hitting the bottle again because one <laughs> of the reasons that i really don't drink anymore is because of hangovers because i feel so shitty the next morning uh, uh i'm gonna get 
dumped for that. Excuse my French. There. That's okay. We'll edit um, you out there. <laughs> the best was I wouldn't. I wouldn't even realize I said it until I saw your face. You made the oh no, you didn't face. Uh, no, but um, you know, the next morning I wake up, I feel horrible. I, my head's pounding. I don't want to eat anything. My appetite's gone. It ruins my diet. I have anxiety. I mean, I feel like, you know, ten pounds of crap in a five-pound sack. And now you come along. You invent, create, uh, impl- implement the greatest invention, idea, concept in the history of man since they discovered alcohol. Wow. Now, thank you. You're going to turn me into a boozer again. Uh, you know, I was going to say, right. Doctor, that's a, that's a heck of an intro right there. I, you know, it is probably one of the best creations over the last 15 years. But, you know, do this. In case nobody's ever heard of Hangover Heaven, which is getting a little impossible right now with the amount of news coverage. There was a great article uh, in USA Today that just got published on the 10th of April. Uh, you know, tell the folks listening here to the corner what Hangover Heaven is, how it works, all that kind of good stuff. Sure. Hangover Heaven is a professional medical practice. We have a bus, a clinic, and we're also able to treat people in their hotel room. I'm the first physician to actually dedicate their career to treating hangovers. And part of the reason I did that is that I felt that physicians had done a really poor job of addressing the issue of hangovers. I mean, when I was at Duke University doing my residency training, I did anesthetics for heart transplants, liver transplants. But in 3,000 years, the best the medical profession has been able to do is Advil and Gatorade. (laughs) Really? (laughs) I mean, really? (laughs) And then I felt it was time for something better. And, uh, and so I applied some of the techniques and medications we use in the recovery room uh, for people with post-operative nausea and vomiting, post-operative headache, et cetera, to cure hangovers. And wow. work great. It's really funny. All, coming here and we were, you know, when I first moved into town and I heard about this at Hangover, it was the most genius idea ever. I said, you know, you have to bring this all over the country. This has got to be something. Obviously, you know Las Vegas, the place it's going to start, but it's got to go all over the country. It's a great idea. And my first thought was, you know, this guy must have had a lot of hangovers to be going after this. But no, you actually go come about this from the scientific medical practice of this. Absolutely. I think that's amazing. And that just, it works out so well. And it is, you're right, nobody ever took care of hangovers. Yeah, I didn't even know about the Gatorade and Advil thing. I thought it was hair of the dog. I thought you just crack another one, get the party started. And that's the only way to get rid of the hangover. What happened to the uh, raw egg and uh, what's that thing called when they put the raw egg inside the tomato juice and they have a beer with it? Oh, the terror the, the dog is what that is. Yeah, 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 it's, it's a bad clamato beer. Heard of that a, makes me uh, nauseous. I've just never heard of the raw egg in there. <laughs> I heard of like a michelada, which is the beer so, and the tomato so, juice, but I never heard of the raw egg. Yeah, we Mexican it up, Mexican it. <laughs> <laughs> Tabasco. So, uh, how, how exactly does the procedure work? I know you said you go to people's hotel rooms, you're on the strip, uh, they have a bus, and, but also available in stores. Tell us everything that they can do to, to get this done. Sure. Well, there's myself, and I have a team of nurses that work with me. People call up. About 50% of our business is pre-booked. We have about 40 people reserved for tomorrow. Wow. wow. There you know. that's, that's why, you, Dave, you're saying it's <laughs> busy. Thanks for coming in on Friday. It's well, really, really busy. You, you try scheduling out with this guy's, uh, you know, this guy's weekend. That can be a tough thing. So, you have, okay, you've got 40 people. So they pre-book. You know, whether they want in-room, on the bus, in the clinic, whatever it may be. And then we'll confirm before the appointment. We'll show up and get them taken care of. Basically, we come in. We do a brief medical history. They sign a consent form. It is a professional medical practice. And we only treat people that are hungover. We don't treat drunk people. And uh, we do get calls from the bars. You know, hey, I'm at the bar. Send the bus. I, I, I need <laughs> fuel, right? I right. need to refuel. Right. And we're like, no, you need, to go, uh, you need to go sleep it off, and then we'll treat you afterwards. So at any rate, we get them uh, the consent, get the IV in. Uh, depending on which package they choose, we have three packages, the Redemption, Salvation, and Rapture packages. Rapture? Rapture, yeah. And, um, I'll take that one yeah. right now. <laughs> and uh, we get them tuned up, and then they're back to their vacation. And that's what it's really all about is getting people back to their vacation. Well, what's the confirmation call like? Do you call up and you're like, hey, was last night as good as you expected it to be, <laughs> or do we not need to come? We actually yell into the telephone to see how hungover they are. <laughs> no, just kidding. The, uh, the confirmation call really is to make sure they're ready. I mean, this is Vegas. It is the entertainment of the cap- entertainment capital of the world now. People come here to forget their worries and just cut loose. And they're not really on a schedule. And so frequently we'll call ahead and they're like, no, we're still asleep. Or, you know, they don't even answer. And we don't want to send our team out until they're actually ready and uh, to make sure they're ready for the bus to pick them up or for the in-room team to show up. So let me, let me ask you guys real quick before we start talking, Doc, about a couple more of these uh, fights we've got with the Facebook preliminary card coming up. UFC 159 is, is this Saturday night. Um, you've also got something that maybe some of the fighters, people that Joey happens to know, are not here in town, could use what I'm seeing on the front page of your website, which is hangoverheaven.com. Uh, you've got a hangover support supplement. Tell me a little bit about that before we talk about some more of these fights here. Sure. The hangover supplements for sale on our website. I've been developing it for the past year and a half. 
and it finally just hit the ground here in Las Vegas, and we're getting it out for distribution. And basically, it's a lot easier to prevent a hangover than it is to treat it after the fact. To sure. treat it after the fact, you really need an IV. But if you up people's antioxidants uh, and vitamin levels to get their enzymes uh, motivated, uh, it's easier to prevent the hangover with that. People should take it before they start drinking or at least before they go to bed. Let me ask you this, though. What's, what, what will be the difference between something like this and, like, I've seen the other one at the gas stations called Unforgive or, uh, Unforgettable or something. I don't remember the, even mm-hmm. the, the name of it. but That's how forgettable was, they are. That's <laughs> a, I know there was another product that I looked at and I was like, I, I, that's not going to work. So, you know, what is the science behind that and what's the difference between those two things? Good question. Most of these other supplements that are out there, there's about 25 others out there, were created by nut club, uh, industry people, that type of thing. They don't have a large amount of scientific background. This is the first supplement that's been created by a physician, and I am the only hangover specialist in the world. I've treated over 4,000 hangovers, and that's how this formula was developed, was by determining what works and what doesn't work. Well, so y- you know what, though, too, there's there's another thing as well, though, and I'm actually, it's funny, because I, I, I'm listening to you, but I'm looking down. I'm actually emailing myself. Go go to hangoverheaven.com right now to get the pills. I'm e- emailing myself as a reminder. But, um, you know, it kind of was also cool, because a lot of people don't know about this, though, listening, though, is, is when a fighter, uh, he has to cut weight for an upcoming competition, he drains himself of all his fluid, all the water in his body, and then they rehydrate. And the problem is is that that process is tolling on the body. It takes its toll. It really affects you in a negative way. And the, 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 the issue with that is that you have to go from one day feeling the worst in the world to the next day performing at your best. And a lot of fighters get affected negatively by this process. Now, one of the things they've learned to do is go to the, try to get an IV where they you know get a saline bag or the sugar water or something, and they, they, you know, they get the IV in there. They replenish their fluid intravenously but the problem with that is like you know you can't just walk into a hospital and ask for an IV <laughs> and, and and most of these guys are trying to find a guy hey do you know a guy that knows a guy who can snag a couple bags and and I'll do it in my hotel room myself and I'll just give my s- stick and needle in my arm myself and I've seen this before I've seen one Phil Baroni actually you go up to his hotel room and there's blood everywhere because he can't find the needle but I saw on Twitter I saw a friend of ours friend of the show good friend of mine Anthony and Jaquani actually rehydrating with you so this is something that fighters can actually do post weigh-ins it's not just for party people it's actually for active mixed martial artists and athletes as well you got it exactly i've treated a number of usc fighters and that's where we started why we started vita heaven was to have something for the fighters for the locals who want vitamin therapy hydration therapy to take care of their needs because a lot of the ufc guys that i take care of are in their late 20s early 30s and that's also a kind of similar demographic with the hangovers when people are 21 you bounce back like nobody's business it's easy (laughs) and uh but when you're 30 31 and you're doing two a day workouts uh it's hard to recover are Especially. you kidding? It takes me like it used to be, you know, 20 minutes I wake up and I may be hung over, but I feel better afterwards when I was 21. Mm-hmm. I'm 37 now. It takes me three, four days. I'm still hung over. Dude, I used exactly. to wake up, you know, from a night of raging, three, four hours of sleep and go hit the gym and feel great still. Yeah. Yeah. Spar and going, going. And then one day that just uh, abruptly came to a halt. I, I woke up and it was like the afternoon and my head's pounding and my body ached and I didn't want to eat and I felt like that for three or four more days. Well, you know, uh, let's do this because we're going to be taking a break here in just a couple of minutes, but Doc, I hope you can uh, stick around with us. Uh, Through our last segment, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a brand new feature called Jostradamus as predictions. You're going to want to hear this, Um, but let's talk a little bit about how folks that are listening right now uh, on Fox 920 here in Las Vegas, it's Friday night, it's about 545 in the p.m. You're thinking to yourself, I need to get some hangover stuff set for for tomorrow for saturday you've already got 40 people booked how many more can you see it all depends on what time people want to get treated prime time for us is 10 30 in the morning yeah i bet everybody wants to make it to the pool party or make it back down to the casino floor and uh lunchtime whatever it may be but they can uh, either go on our website or give us a ring and anything after usually two o'clock we can generally get people in we have a great b complex shot much better than just a general b12 shot that people can come by and get we have our supplements for sale at the clinic and people can also order them online yeah and and real quick uh, phil let me do this uh we give out the website again it's hangoverheaven.com that's hangoverheaven.com just like it sounds and you can call hangover heaven at nine zero 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 six six zero that's here in las vegas at 702 900 0660 so phil you've got about a minute here you've got something I, else for the doctor i, before I we just wanted break. to know what the most popular form of treatment was uh, is it the going to the hotel room is it the bus is the, how what is the most popular and, and which package as well you talked about the 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 rapture the other one which package and what 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 other method I would say the Rapture package has definitely become the most popular package. It's a bag and a half IV fluid, all the vitamins, all the medications, a B12 shot, and oxygen. 
It'll get you back to your oh, location you for out. sure. <laughs> Boy, that's... I, I'm not even hungover. And I want that now. <laughs> well, I was, I was going to say, I'm at hangoverheaven.com right now. Yeah, checking it out. I'm ready to set it. I'm ready to order my appointment. Well, see, for Joey and and guys that are listening to the show and gals that are listening to the show that are actually really big into the you know into the whole mixed martial arts uh, field and they do feel themselves drained. Don't take this into your own hands. Visit our friends at hangoverheaven.com or give them a call at nine zero zero. 0660 and we're going to come back guys in just a couple of minutes we're going to talk a lot more about this UFC 159 card we're going to have Joe Stradamus's predictions we're also going to talk more to Dr. Burke and we're going to get some topics that Heidi couldn't quite fit in the other day but we're going to we're going to fit them into this show you're listening to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox 920 in Las Vegas and worldwide on UFCradio.com All right, welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner here on Fox 920 in Las Vegas and streaming worldwide on UFCradio.com. Been a really fun show. If you're just tuning into the MMA Fight Corner, shame on you. You have missed a whole entire show of awesome talk about the UFC 159 card coming up this Saturday on pay-per-view. But of course, guys, you know, we're talking to Dr. Jason Burke from Hangover Heaven as well, and, and I had mentioned earlier in the show, sometimes folks can't really afford the pay-per-view, but what you can do is get yourself out to one of our great establishments here in Las Vegas. Most of the bars worth their salt are buying the UFC fight tomorrow. Buffalo Wild Wings, Joey. You, 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 TGI Fridays TGI carries TGI Fridays, all. yeah. I mean, you know, I know Buffalo Wild Wings carries them all. Uh, all the great casinos here in town. So if you're out there, you're getting really plastered. You're watching an amazing UFC on 150. 59 fight dr burke sunday is that still a day that folks can can stroll into either i guess the clinic is the bus out there rolling is i mean how long do you guys really work this thing on the weekends we're 8 a.m to 4 p.m seven days a week beautiful and, and your location where are you located here in vegas so we're right across the street from the spearmint rhino right near trump tower okay but it's like we just said i'm gonna location, swing by location location <laughs> location i'm gonna swing by after the show i got a 12 30 appointment so at I think the spearmint rhino yeah you know, okay <laughs> well way to, way to go joey i didn't yeah. know you can make appointments there <laughs> no, i got a 12 30 lunch uh, uh at, on the strip so i'm gonna actually try to stop by and get one of those b shots today. be careful of the afternoon shift at the rhino you know what i mean yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and take that from our lead spearmint 
Pet Rhino expert, Heidi Fagg. And there's going to be a more detailed report coming up on that. But but again, I, I want to invite all of our listeners that are listening to us because it's Friday night here in Las Vegas. You're listening to Fox Sports Radio uh, or you're listening to us online, Doctor, which is a great place for folks to check you guys out as well. But go to hangoverheaven.com. That's hangoverheaven.com. A really awesome website. Very easy to navigate. Gives you all the highlights about what it is your service does, how it can help folks out, and especially help out these fighters. So we do have a big fight weekend. We've got some more Heidi's hit list topics that we didn't get a chance to cover the other day. But guys, before we do that, I want to sort of prep up the newest segment that we're bringing here to the show. Okay, we've been waiting for this. We, we, we've been we've been waiting patiently for the day to come, and finally now it's here. We have Joe Stradamus's predictions. So last night, I'm hanging out in my room, I'm doing my thing, and suddenly, I got transferred to the spirit world, dummy. You're in the spirit world, dummy. And the spirits of MMA world, they started talking to me. They say, go get your crystal ball, get your Ouija board, put up, wrap a towel around your head, get your MMA magic medallion, light some candles. So I do all this stuff. I start doing my little seance. I'm chanting, I'm humming and hawing, and suddenly the candles start flickering. The windows burst open. The wind Close to the room and blows out the kindles, and the spirits start talking to me. And you know what they said? They what said, did they say? That's, Brush your teeth. You got a stinky <laughs> breath, fool. No, they didn't really say that. <laughs> you know what they told me though? They told me that change is coming. They said the UFC was taken by storm by a woman who was the first ever woman to win a judo Olympic medal. She won a bronze medal, but they said there's another one coming. This one was the first woman to ever win a silver medal limp in the Olympics in the form of wrestling. Her name is Sarah McMahon. They said that before the year's out, before the clock strikes midnight on 2013, we will have a new 135-pound woman's champion, and her name is Sarah McMahon. Sarah McMahon. Joe that's, Stradamus has spoken. That's the Joe Stradamus prediction. So, Heidi, Phil, Heidi, you had a chance to, to bring Sarah on uh, earlier in the week. What do you think about Joe Stradamus' predictions? Do you agree? We're going to have a, a new champ here? I, I think we need to see Sarah tested against some higher-level competition uh, in the UFC before I can agree with that. She does you have the tools. You doubt the great and, and, and mystical Joe Stradamus? Ronda's just too much of a fun mom <laughs> phenomenon with what she does with that armbar. She just finds a way to get it like we saw her in trouble with Liz Carmouche and Liz had her back and Liz had you know that rear naked choke getting ready to go underneath her chin yet Ronda found a way to get out of that and make it her game you know what what's the golden rule in fighting styles make fights the thing is this is Ronda's a phenom when it hits the ground but what happens if she can't get it to the ground we've all seen her get a case of BLS when she gets punched. And that's Brock Lesnar syndrome. She doesn't like it. She turns and cowers. You it's know, like she was attacked by a swarm of bees. A swarm of bees, you know. She's closing her eyes. She's kind of running. She is not a fan of getting hit at all. Uh, I think that the wrestling of Sarah McMahon will trump the judo of Ronda, Ronda Rousey. I don't think Ronda will be able to put Sarah on her back. And I think Sarah will use her wrestling defensively to keep it standing and open up a can of whoop-ass with ones and twos on the jaw of Ronda Rousey. Well, listen, she's got it. first thing for that prediction to be coming true. She's got to get past Sheila Gaff tomorrow right. night, the German tank. Listen, Gaff's and, on and, and Ronda has to get past uh, uh, Kat Zingano. Absolutely. Which, which the spirits told me would happen, by the way. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the German I love tank Gaff. She's on a three-fight win streak. They call her, you know, she's got another nickname that's really not official, and it's the Berserker. She comes out wild. Her last three fights have ended in the first round, two of them under 10 seconds. So we got to see they get past Gaff first. Yeah, well, we're going to see that coming up again. That's Saturday night, UFC 159 in New Jersey. It's going to be a great fight. Uh, before we get too much further, because I think we're going to have to talk to the doctor just a little bit more, let all these fighters that listen to the show know how they can get themselves replenished, rehydrated, and back on their feet better than ever from Hangover Heaven. But, uh, folks, it's time for a little bit more of that Heidi's Hit List. Okay. Heidi, why don't you break us down a couple of these topics that you had left over from the other day we didn't get a chance to get to. So take us away with some more of these Heidi Hit List topics. Well, the most, I guess, precedent topic right now going on in MMA uh, and the UFC is the New York MMA bill. It's been passed in the Senate. The question is, will it make it to the assembly floor? In the past four years, it's passed in Senate, yet it gets stomped out in the assembly. It's never passed. It falls under the budget category of tourism and parks. And usually what they've said as a reason is it's budgeting. But 
I don't buy that. It's literally like Dana White had said, he spent probably 25 to 30 minutes in the scrum before this fight yesterday speaking about it. And it's really the Las Vegas Culinary Union. What it is is they want to implement unionized workers, but station casinos, which is owned by the Fertitta Zufa. Zufa. The, the largest non-union casino operation in Nevada, by the Correct. way. So that, that is why the Culinary Union out here does uh, have such a vested interest. And right? what they've been doing is actually busing people yes. up to New York, targeting women that have some kind of lobbying interest in this and trying to go anti-MMA on the approval for it. And they seem to be making some progress. In fact, both Dana and Lorenzo have been out there saying that they don't know that there's any kind of support still riding with this with the momentum that they had. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's an interesting storyline, and I know Phil, you're from back east. You're you're from the New York, New Jersey area. You spent time back there, so amateur MMA uh, is still legal in New York and New Jersey, but professional MMA is not. Uh, like Heidi was mentioning, the Culinary Union from Las Vegas uh, has put together a couple of anti-MMA websites, things that are targeting the values, voters. And doctor, I see you shaking your head too because it, it starts to become a ridiculous a ridiculous proposition when they're talking business. Uh, you know, Governor Cuomo of New York uh, is actually looking at this right now and saying he will take into consideration uh, the budgetary, uh, you know, the budgetary wherewithal this could bring because of, you know, the amount of money that could, you know, f you know flow into places like Syracuse, like Buffalo. What do you think as a businessman who also you know, has to deal with some people, some medical professionals saying, well, hey, this guy's a doctor, but you shouldn't drink. And that's probably the way, uh, you know, to really avoid the hangover. What do you think about the legislation back there in New York in regards to UFC MMA stuff? Well, New York is a heavily uh, unionized state, definitely a blue state. And it sounds like the uh, unions from Nevada are uh, having a significant amount of uh, pressure on making that uh, bill get some resistance. And I think that's really a bad thing. The MMA could do great things in New York. I mean, yeah, it's a could. huge audience. The amount of money that it could bring in is astronomical. Listen, uh, back at UFC 111, they did uh, the, the UFC press conference, pre-fight press conference from Radio City Music Hall. There was a line around the corner. Now, when I say a city block, you got to understand a city block is it's pretty big. It, okay. I was going to say it's one square mile. Isn't that what, what a city block is? Right. So that is that's quite a ways. Yeah. It was around the corner at UFC 79. They did a, a screening at Madison Square Garden. They had it on a big screen. OK, 3000 people showed up. UFC 100 at Radio City Music Hall. The place was full, about four to five thousand people watching it on a screen. Can you imagine? How many people would go to an event? It yep. would sell out in a heartbeat. Yeah. A heartbeat. It's the silliest thing I've seen. Well, it's like we were talking about the other day, Doc. Uh, the Syracuse, the Buffalo regions, the, the places that – you know, do have great venues to host sporting events, don't necessarily get the big billings all the time when they come. That's where the regions w would be most affected by the UFC coming there because they would play to the Syracuses, to the Buffaloes. Uh, those are the target demographics also for the UFC. So I think it would be fantastic. Uh, you know, we've covered a lot of ground here today, guys. But I, I want to throw something to the panel again here before we go. And again, uh, talking to Dr. Jason Burke of Hangover Heaven. Thank you so much for coming down, uh, being an in-studio guest with us. Again, if you're listening to us, right now on Fox here in Las Vegas. It's almost 6 o'clock at night on Friday. You've got to get in touch with Dr. Burke if you think you're going to go out drinking and partying too much and you need that relief. Hangoverheaven.com. That's hangoverheaven.com, or you can call 900-0660. That's 900-0660. They can set you up for an appointment. The doctor can get you replenished, rehydrated. Great stuff. So real quick, guys, Joey, with you, GSP Hendricks, is this bound to happen? Is this fight locked in? It's a big topic right now. Dude, you want to know the truth, man? I want to know the absolute truth. Give me Joe Stradamus' truth. I would not be surprised to hear GSP say he's going to retire. Really? Not surprised either. Phil, what, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? It needs to happen. It has to happen. Oh, okay. God. It's sound, it sounded like the Pacquiao Mayweather yeah, fight, so now it's never going to happen. I'm not sure. Listen, Dana said yesterday that it is going to happen. It's just a matter of time. You know, he thinks it's going to be sooner than later. I don't know, though. Heidi, real quick, we've got about 30 seconds. GSP Hendricks bound to happen. I think so. I think it's just a matter of Hendrix's hand healing up. I think that was what the holdup was. The initial prognosis was that he was going to be okay uh, right away, but now it seems it's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to guess by, let's say, August or so, hopefully not in Canada again, because I'd like to see that welterweight title kind of get 
out there. Let's let's get the pressure on. Let's do it in New York. Well, guys, this yeah. has been a great show for Heidi Fang, Joey Varner, Phil Devine, and our special in-studio guest, Dr. Jason Burke of Hangover Heaven. I'm Dave Carney. You've been listening to the MMA Fight Corner here on Fox 920 in Las Vegas and worldwide on UFCRadio.com. Until next Monday, keep fighting the good fight, and we'll see you back here on the corner.